Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe. So I kind of had this thought as far as our narcissists, a lot of them, the way that they handle certain situations is manipulation. It's toxic. But then you also see uh, relationship advice, how to win someone over. And a lot of the advice that they give are kind of manipulation tactics. So the narcissist is kind of second nature to them. They uh, are dismissive um, at first, uh, you know, with the intermittent reinforcement causes that trauma bond. So, you know, you, you hear relationship advice, don't always be readily available, make them wait, get back to them in, in time. Uh, and also, you know, don't accept a date right away, make them wait another week or two, uh, just all these things. And in a sense, there is something to it because you do want somebody to, to work towards being with you, investing in you. But here's where it gets tricky is the narcissist by nature, the manipulative. And in the beginning, they kind of fool us because they're putting some effort in too during that love bombing stage. So we feel that we're safe. But then the narcissist, something switches. And if you go across all these self-aware narcissists, they'll say it's just like a switch, just just happens if you look back on different relationships uh with a narcissist you can see the black and white how it just instantly changes and they can be excessively cold they they go through hot and cold and and that's where we start getting uncomfortable where we want to fix it and we're investing and they're taking it for granted and i had been watching some videos of, on a sociopath and she had said that uh, she doesn't even feel anxiety now this is a sociopath narcissists do feel anxiety um but she doesn't feel anxiety uh doesn't feel doing illegal things is wrong she doesn't have that connection to the to the emotion and just like our narcissists they don't have the connection to the emotions to understand us so they don't care so she stopped doing uh illegal things because it can be a detriment whether it's criminal sentencing things like that she doesn't want it a detriment to her life um so the narcissist as as long as they're being enabled they're going to continue acting poorly and unfortunately the people that take a stand are the ones that get discarded often the narcissist isn't going to stop and think or if they do it's for a short period of time and then it's just too frustrating it's too much bullshit easier to find someone new that's why they're into that monkey branching but where it gets unsafe is when they're unpredictable like if you were dealing with somebody who was always an asshole you just know to avoid them if you're with somebody who's always kind you know it's safe to talk to them but a narcissist flip-flops and if you can comment below the times they flip-flop with me wasn't because of me it was external uh forces um to where they truly love the person they'd stick around but since it's from an outside force and we didn't do anything wrong we're just living our life going through day to day uh, and all of a sudden the tables are turned it's, it's really disheartening very unsafe very toxic so how do we deal with it well uh, we have to realize that you know the narcissist is always going to be unstable there's always going to be triggers they're not going to be able to connect to the emotions and it gets to be subtle because when you hear certain conversations, especially when you're wrapped up in them, it, it gets confusing. Like hindsight is 20, 20 sometimes, but when you're in the middle of a conversation, you don't see it coming. Uh, you hear the attacks that they give and so you naturally out of human instinct want to attack it or try to address this or that and and it takes away from the situation at the hand so situations never go resolved we're walking on eggshells we can't express ourselves when we do try to express ourselves live our lives enjoy 
moments in time, if it's something that doesn't serve the narcissist needs, it's taken out on us and we're cut down because of it or stifled. So we're not living our true life, our full life. And it is almost like over time too, it changes. Like you feel you're safe doing certain things and all of a sudden now it irritates them or they're pissed off. Uh, they become controlling and stressors seem to bring out the evil in the narcissist uh, and life stressors, whether it's divorce, death of a parent or somebody close to you, uh, financial struggles, loss of a job, moving. It's often the stressors where you really see a lot of the abuse start to come forward. Um, that's more pronounced, but in the day-to-day, -day, it is more subtle. And it becomes expected that we deal with this abuse by our abuser. And the closer you are to the narcissist, the more damage that's going to be done. Some of them are very underhanded. They know exactly what they're doing. Um, some of them do self-reflect in a sense, or sometimes they're told that your life's a mess because you're an asshole. And they can kind of be like, yeah, I guess. Um, but are they going to change? Like, they can be like, yeah, I, I am. But it's second nature to them. And it's almost like they see it as like a hassle. Like, I just want to live my life. If I'm angry, I'm angry. If I'm pissed, I'm pissed. And sometimes the vulnerable ones will uh, pout about how their life is turning out. Um, and they can even see that they've been assholes to people. But they still have that poor pity me mentality to where they might take it in, like, okay, that makes sense. But it's not something that they really want to strive to change. Like, pisses them off that it's not easier. And you give them advice. That's the thing, like, with narcissists, it's so hard to give advice. It's next to impossible because they don't comprehend it. It is like reasoning with a child. It really is like reasoning with a child because they, they have a childlike mentality of like two years old up to a couple years. And they can nod their head like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I understand. Okay, okay doesn't mean they're grasping it just like with a child you can say all these things but they're not it's not going to sink into them uh most of the time at a very young age it's constantly working with a child to try to uh make living in society easier uh empathy um like the, the full uh, emotional capacity doesn't even fully develop until age 25 and there's all the stages we go through in life but the narcissist was so stifled for so long and just tried getting through life manipulating squeaking by that if, if you can kind of relate it to and it's really sad, but there, as a teacher, there are some students who I had in seventh grade. They, they didn't even know what certain letters looked like, let alone how to write their own name. They couldn't read. So they're scraping by. And then when adulthood happens, they're lost. And it's the same with emotional capacity that they scraped by. They got by. Just like an illiterate got by. But once...
they get to adulthood and they're out in this world of emotions of trying to have a, a family or a husband or a wife or a life partner, they're lost and frustrated and the frustration makes it worse. And they know how to get by when things are easy. Everybody can get by when things are easy. But a true character, uh, you know, they sacrifice for others. They care about others. And if we all did that, it would all work out where we each care about each, each other person, each other. And it all works out. You know, if I'm concerned about you, but then you're concerned about me, like, no, you need some time for this or it, it all balances out. But when it's one-sided, it drains you. And when it's unpredictable or unwarranted, it can destroy you. If, you know, um, the, the ghosting, if we did nothing wrong, now we're ghosted. Uh, sometimes narcissists make up certain things in their head and will start blaming us. Sometimes it's a manipulation tactic because they want to leave or they want us to leave to call it quits. Or they do have like a paranoia sometimes because if they're capable of doing certain things, they feel others would do it. And it's interesting how people perceive the different things in their life. They look at it from their life experiences, their thought processes. And we look at things in a different way. Like we can work through things and love conquers all. And the narcissist looks at it as love is not real. The, the narcissist, it's like they crave it, but then when they get it, they don't believe it's real. And they just start questioning it. And they take what they have for granted. They hurt the people that are there to help them. They push people away. They want people close, but they push them away. And they are broken people. And, and, and we have to heal how broken we are because we've been through some stuff. Because we start doing that too, pushing away the people that want to help us and be there for us. So by healing ourselves, we're going to have stronger boundaries and we're going to see the red flags. Once we start noticing things are off, we don't have to stick around. But it, it's uh, like a trap we fell into where we thought it was safe. And... The fact somebody can throw you away, you know, we really got to think about that because it hurts, but it's not a, a fault of who we are. It's just that the narcissist beat us down and we wanted something in return. They don't want to give anything back. Or if they did, it was only their way or for ulterior motives. And it could be quite devastating. But I know uh, we're searching for answers. We're trying to understand what happened. But I know that social media can also be draining. I uh, have told you guys I have COVID right now. So I've been just in bed constantly for the last eight days so I'm kind of scrolling through uh Facebook and I really realized how stupid so much of the stuff is uh, I'm where I like uh educational things or creative things but it's getting to the point where social media is wasting a lot of our time 
uh, it's good to get your information off of YouTube, but try not to fall into the trap of the shorts or the brain dead stuff. Um, cause we're better than that. It, you know, you see people who want their claim at fame that they go through and take other people's content and they just had their screenshot of them. Oh. And that's all it is. Like them laughing at something. And a lot of times the things are stupid and it's, I don't want it to consume your life. Like it consumed my weekend because uh, I was just stuck in bed, but there's a lot out there other than watching somebody laugh at somebody or the, the content that people are putting out are all copycat things or useless or very low talent like everybody's doing the same dance moves uh, and I enjoy it when it's talent and we all you know we all want our claim to fame but there's like no quality control I guess we could put it so we're watching a lot of stuff that doesn't have quality so focus on things that are going to bring you joy you know me and watching some lady laugh at some stupid thing and the other thing too that really bothers me is there's a lot of uh like uh trivia things and they'll ask people i don't know how many how many states are in the united states and if they say 47 they're like this right and it's not right and we all know it's not right but they do it so often that it's going to start messing with our brains that whatever that little trivia thing is they never give you the true answer so unless you know it you're going to start bringing in wrong information and we are like not only dumbing ourselves down we're teaching ourselves to be dumb um so be careful of the things that you watch make sure it's quality stuff because the way tiktok and uh youtube it just it'll get you it'll infiltrate some crazy stuff but take good care of yourself and mentally the things you put into your brain um the fact that uh sometimes we just start watching social media and we forget to get up and vacuum or do the laundry or make a healthy meal that uh we need to take control of our lives and they have uh over in china tiktok about uh there's an allowance of 40 minutes per per kid per day to watch TikTok. And the Chinese government has released a different kind of TikTok over in the States or wherever you guys live to where we get all the, the BS crap, the silliness, the stupidness, the emptiness. But over in China, they're taking care of their kids with allowing them to see like educational stuff they do educational games um and we just have to remember what we put into our brains you know our thoughts become our actions um so it's just something to be aware of but it is interesting how narcissism has a lot of manipulation tactics and the change in society with the the change in gender roles because before it was almost like an unspoken you're going to be the submissive wife you're going to raise the kids you're not going to talk back you're going to do everything your husband has to say yada yada and now things are changing and you know narcissists with their kids they can say go sit down go to your room i don't want to talk about it pick this up um you are going to soccer they're in control of whatever the situation is but when it comes to a westernized relationship uh, with two people wanting, I guess, you know, we do want some control over our lives too. We're willing to compromise, but, you know, they keep telling us to 
be our own person to do our own things. Uh, if we want to go out with our friends that we need to do that. If we want to go to a quilt show or whatever the things are that we want to do to be a whole person within ourselves. And it's tricky because, you know, the two become one, but then it's like two different people living separate lives, but you're together. And the success rate of marriage is failing. Uh, people don't know how to compromise um, because you can only compromise if both parties are willing to and the narcissist doesn't want to. So that's where we give up our boundaries and that's where we try to make it work out of love. And in doing so, we're losing who we are because it's not a 50-50. It's a 90-10, 0-100 so there's, there's times we can sacrifice, but where we don't even have an identity anymore. We're not allowed to make decisions. We're not allowed to talk. We're not allowed to feel. Narcissists hate our emotions because they think we're trying to manipulate them. They don't understand we're feeling what we're feeling. I cry when I'm frustrated. Um... And uh, they they don't like they don't like emotions. And that's what love's all about. Spending time together, understanding each other's emotions, and having the other person's back. But the narcissist will turn on you very quickly. So even if you stay married to one, they might stick it out 10, 20, 30 years until you really need something. You see all these divorces after somebody gets a terminal illness. And it's really sad because the other person invested their lives in that person. And when they needed them, that's when they left. And you deserve somebody who's going to love you the way you need to be loved, and the way that you love. And that's when true happiness happens, when, when we can love ourselves to, to be by ourselves and to share that when the right person comes along. But we have to be whole within ourselves. It's tough. But uh, we're going to get through this. We're going to be stronger because of it. So now that we're stronger, the next relationship is going to be even better. Just take your time and uh, don't just be with someone to be with someone. Take your time to be with the right person. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good night.